Hmm. I wonder what this reminds me of. Hey guys, this is my review for Peppermint, which it's basically The Punisher. It's directed by the same guy who directed the first Taken movie and has stars Jennifer Gardner as a woman who is hell-bent on getting revenge on the gangs, the corrupt judges, the criminals who were associated with the death of her husband and her daughter. Now admittedly, the death scene, the reason why it happens is kind of silly, and the dialogue and the interactions between her, her husband, and her daughter are just kind of too perfect at first, and it's a bit cringy, and thank god they don't spend a lot of time on it. <laughs> the hell, the movie doesn't even open with that stuff, it actually opens with her killing off a gangster, and then it goes back in time to explain everything that's happened, and it's like, uh, okay, I guess it's alright. But admittedly, it takes a bit to trek through the past, like, the past is pretty bad, because, like, even when the court scene happens. It's so dramatic. It is so ridiculous that all this would happen so obvious. And they're like, yeah, this guy's just so corrupt. You can buy the judges and everything. I was like, ah, I'm sorry, dude. Like, the publicity of this whole thing would just be massive. <laughs> when it gets into the whole her being basically the Punisher, it's actually not that bad. Admittedly, the violence in this movie is actually a little bit higher than I would expect it. It's not R rated, but it's pretty freaking close with the brutality of it all. There's some pretty good, some good one-liners, some really bad ones throughout the film. Jennifer Gardner's not bad. There's scenes where she's actually pretty good in terms of her character and visually showing off the strife and the pain that this character's going through. Like when she's taking out these posters in her daughter's bedroom, that's sad. Admittedly, it is very sad. But it's just kind of weird that she's done the whole house and it's these last two pictures on the wall that get her sad. I would have thought that she would have done everything in the house first, but she hadn't touched her daughter's room. I thought that would have been fantastic to do, but that's just a set deck choice. But then the set deck actually does a pretty good job with this whole... Um, bum, this homeless situation area where she's in, where that's where she's staged out of, but they just like her because she said they insinuate that she stopped crime in this area, but I kind of wonder how when she's been tailing and figuring out the entire operations of the Garcia guys. Also, the title, Peppermint, you're wondering what that might be? Well, at first, I in the trailer, you see that it's because her daughter liked peppermint ice cream. That's it. She's never mentioned or called that. She's called her name throughout the whole movie, Riley North. And the film pretty much transpires almost exactly like The Punisher, particularly the Thomas Jane movie. There's a lot of sequences, there's a lot of motives, and there's a lot of kind of the whole arc is almost identical to that of Thomas Jane's Punisher film. So the action scenes aren't too bad. There's a few good scenes here and there. Jennifer Gardner definitely did some good training for this film. She has a, pr a bunch of pretty good sequences. There's one time where she jumps off a ledge though into this pinata store and I just did not understand <laughs> the mentality behind it. But she gets beat the shit up. She gets beaten up and definite props to makeup department for making her look like shit underneath her makeup. <laughs> There's a few scenes where she's just covered in shit, like just dirt, blood, mud, grime, gunpowder, all this stuff. Otherwise, Peppermint is kind of unfortunately a very bland experience. As I said, it's this storyline. So it's nothing new, it's nothing in innovative, it's nothing really that's going to be like, oh yeah, I'll remember that movie. But it's not a badly made movie. There is also this extremely strange editing choice of using Tony Scott-like cuts. In the kind of the final years of Tony Scott's filmmaking, he was using these very strange, super saturated, rapid cut kind of cuts. They appear in this movie for some reason, but only at specific times. Like the entire movie is not cut like this. It's just specific areas. So it just feels like someone else came in to edit these parts. And it's kind of jarring. But otherwise, Peppermint is an okay time, but you're probably going to forget it very quickly. It's not a badly made film, but it's not a memorable one. So in the end, I'm going to give Peppermint a 3 out of 7. Better than the fucking Predator. I can't believe I'm saying that.
Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, that's all from me. See you guys next time.